Okay, um, this is a message to Mohammed Hijab. We've just seen one of your videos at Hyde Park where you're speaking to a Christian that doesn't know much about the Bible or ancient languages. You obviously don't because you just quoted a passage in the Bible, I believe in Job, which talks about the earth can be shaken and that Jesus was stood on the height, the, the height of the temple and the devil said to him, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth and the four corners of the earth means that the, 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 the world is flat when, when the sheet came down from heaven. You obviously don't understand ancient language, Mr. Hijab. Let me just give you an education on this, okay? Firstly, we're going to start with the four winds, okay? Well, you know with the four winds we have east, west, north and south, okay? Um, we use this language today, okay? Um, when you mention the four corners... When the sheet came down from heaven and the four corners of the earth, um, you're using this literally. You don't use um, you don't use that literally. I'll tell you why. Okay, the phase four corners of the earth is an iodim in the boss in the apostle John's time. Much of it is in English today, and this actually refers to every distant location on the earth. This is the meaning also in the context of Revelation 20 verses 7 to 8 and the other occurrence of the phrase four corners of the earth is in the book of Revelation. Um, in the King James Version we have the word quarter here rather than corner though the Greek word is both the same in Revelation 7 1 and Revelation 20 verses 7 to 8. So just to let you know uh, iodims in one language can be difficult to translate into another language because a literal translation is meaningless in the target language okay so imagine i'll give you an example imagine a literal translation of you're pulling my leg would be understood in other languages it is probable that the english um, understanding of the four corners of the earth referring to the remotest parts of the earth stems from revelation 20 verses 7 to 8 and if you look at the evaluation of the context, we may conclude this is also the meaning of the four corners of the earth in Isaiah 11 verse 12. Okay, so this is iodemic language, which you, what you're actually doing, Mohammed, you're, you're translating the words of the Bible literally as you would with the Quran. And you don't do that with the Bible, sir. The Bible has uh, languages where when you look at the ancient source of these languages and you look at it in the context in which the Bible's speaking, you get the true meaning, but you don't do that, sir. Um, you also said that the earth is flat. Let me just read Isaiah 41 verse 22 to you, Mr. Muhammad Hijab. It says, he, that is God, that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. This is Isaiah 41 verse 22. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. That tells me the earth is round and not flat. Okay. And if you read the Quran, it says the earth is spread out like a carpet. Carpets are flat, as far as I know. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Was that all right? Yeah, so, uh, Mohammed Ijab, uh, we're coming down to Hyde Park soon. So, uh, the Royal Blood Posse will be waiting for you if you want to debate Mike or me or both of us on this topic. God bless you, sir. Oh, one more. Yeah, go on, bro. Uh, I've got a question for you, Mohammed Ijab. Um... And this contradicts your own Quran and your own beliefs, and I'm going to just ex I'm going to, and it going to expound this to you. And I hope that you take on board what we're actually saying. Um, the Muslim belief is that you believe in Jesus Christ being born miraculously, and that Mary had a son called Jesus, because in the Quran it says, "Jesus, son of Mary." You believe this, okay? Now you accept that Jesus Christ was born miraculously, and that Mary is the mother of Jesus Christ. Yet in the Quran it says that Jesus, God does not have a son because he doesn't have a consort. Now, according to the Arabic language in the Quran, a consort means a wife. So according to you, you believe that we, that God sexually seared a son. And that is not the Christian position. That is the Muslim position. And that shows that your God is not the God of this world, the true God, because we know that God Almighty does not, have sex does not produce does not need to have sex in order to have a son so you accept jesus christ being the son of mary 
yet without any kind of consort, yet you can't accept God can have a son unless there's a consort. So your God is, your God does not, you have a problem with that in your Quran, so I hope you understand where I'm coming from with that. Mm, Amen. Yeah. Have you got anything to add on that? Uh, yeah, ba basically, uh, the, the, every time we argue and debate with the Muslims, they do straw man arguments. Yeah. So the straw man argument is, well, God must have had sex with Mary. That's what the Quran is actually saying. Yeah. They're saying that is the Christian position. How can God have a son without a consort? So what wow. they're saying is, in order for God to have a son, that, that means a sexual encounter must have had to take place. Wow. Well, so how can that be when you you believe in the miracle birth, Muhammad Hijab? So that goes against your own belief. You're yeah. contradicting your own scripture, sir. Yeah, so it's even worse, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's a good point, mate. So, Muhammad Hijab... We're going to come down. If you want to meet the Royal Blood Passive, we'll be waiting for you, bro. Take care and God bless. God bless. <laughs>